You know, I'm kind of torn with Joukowsky Tart because I haven't really seen him. I mean, uh, you know, he that was the first time you mentioned he was gone for a couple days for personal reasons. Um, as I said, he hasn't gotten a first team rep all summer. I'm very surprised by that. I thought they'd mix him in, especially when you consider, remember, Harris and Epps have both missed time. You got your Mega Mac guys, McMullen and McDonald here with you on Burton 365. Uh, appreciate your streaming on in. While you're at it, hit the like button. Please, we need to help. They can't tell me to continue to remind everybody to hit the like button. We got a lot of people streaming in, almost 300 you guys online right now. Thank you very much for that. Hit the like button. It does wonders for our um, uh, algorithm, whatever the hell that means. Again, I, it's one of these days I'm going to learn about YouTube. All I know is how to speak into my uh, remote control and say YouTube, and then whatever I need, and boom, it pops up. It's great. I'm impressed you do that. I just uh, type in YouTube.com. <laughs> no, I'm talking about watching it on the well, TV. I know. Do I you... still I still do that. Old okay. school. I got the I, old thing. I do watch some YouTube on the TV every day. Um, I One thing I want to revisit from our conversation with uh, Joe Santa Liquido, because uh, I feel I have to be fair here. I see our guy or our gal, Dominique uh, Dabney is on, who is the president of the Jukwaski Tart fan club. Uh-oh. Uh, and and Uh-oh. We, were, we were debating uh, Jukwaski a little earlier. He did play well. He made some plays yesterday. Some big hits, yeah. Which I got to give him credit for. You pointed out that he played the most snaps of anybody on defense. I suggested that it might be the Eagles trying to actually get a look at him. Because he's missed time in practice, personal time, injury, and the like. So they really haven't given a chance and haven't had a chance to observe and see what he does. And that's why I thought he got as many snaps. You suggested it might be the barns out of the door. They, they, they needed somebody to play safety snaps yesterday. How many, how many snaps did Marcus Epps get yesterday, John? Uh, zero. Deference would, player, that Marcus would Epps. Be none. And how many snaps did Anthony Harris play yesterday? Zero. Zero. So, oh, he is certainly behind those two. Sorry, Dominique, who suggested he was the Eagles' best safety when they signed him. He's playing all these snaps, and the other two guys are uh, don't even have the shoulder pans on sitting on the sideways. Oh, they've already decided who, decided who their two best safeties are. That's a given at this point. We know who's starting. Um, but I, I got to give Todd credit. He, he made some plays yesterday. I thought that there was an overexcitement level here. Oh, they got Chikwaski talk. There's a reason that San Francisco let him walk away. You, you, you brought up the Niners earlier, that the Niners roster is just flat out better than the Eagles roster. Their biggest question, as big a question as Jalen Hurts is, they got a bigger question at quarterback than the Eagles do, but their their the roster is that good, and their defense is specifically that good, and they just let him walk away. And he got, what, $2 million and change from the Eagles? If yeah, he was that bit, good a yeah. player, there's no way San Francisco lets him walk away. Yeah. Um, you know, I'm kind of torn with Joukowsky Tart because I haven't really seen him. I mean, uh, you know, he that was the first time you mentioned he was gone for a couple days for personal reasons. Um, as I said, he hasn't gotten a first-team rep all summer. I'm very surprised by that. I thought they'd mix him in, especially when you consider, remember, Harris and Epps have both missed time. Harris had COVID to start camp, or he's just coming back. Then he had a a dental issue, so he missed uh, uh, three practices total. Um, Didn't get a first-team rep during that time. Then Marcus Epps had a back issue, only missed one practice, but he was back by that point, didn't get a first-team rep. All the first team reps have gone to Josiah Scott and Kayvon Wallace, Andre Sachere. Reed Blankenship has gotten first team reps at times in this training camp. And oh, by the way, since we're singing Tart's praises today, or at least I am, Blankenship made a couple plays yesterday too. Yeah. All those young defensive backs that are in the Eagle backfield, not specifically on the corners. Nobody really impressed me yesterday. Job made the one play in the end zone, but he also got beat a couple of times. Uh, Kerry Vincent, yeah, no. Mac McCain, if he needs to play, 
uh, Zach McPherson, they got off the field pretty quick. I think he only played like the first two series, and he's borderline deference himself. Uh, the Eagles secondary did not really wow me yesterday. No. Uh, and here's the thing. You know, okay, Josiah Scott, as I mentioned, started and was a captain. So I think that's a good sign for him. Uh, Kayvon Wallace was the other starter at safety. I don't know if that was a good sign for him or not, because he, as you pointed out, they didn't play well. Although Kayvon, you know, they were on the field a lot. So he made some tackles, um, you know, was long drives for both teams. Um, I, it, you know, is that a good sign for Jaquaski Tart? That's what I was saying before that he played so much. Or is that a bad sign? Um, here, here's the thing. When you start talking about, and I think this applies to Deion Kane at wide receiver because everybody's excited about Deion Kane. If you're going to be the fifth wide receiver or you're going to be the sixth wide receiver or you're going to be the fifth, fourth safety, or if you're going to keep five, you got to play special teams. Tart doesn't play special teams. One of the things with Scott, Scott is one of their best special teams players. Sasha Ray, who was cross-trained between safety and nickel, now they have a nickel, he's one of their best special teams players. So those guys are almost, I don't want to say put get out the pen, but you you can I, I, you can click the pen. How's that? You might not want to put the ink on the page yet, but they're I would be stunned if either of those two are cut because of their special teams value. Um, Jaquaski Tart doesn't play special teams. Three snaps on special teams yesterday. He's been a starting player for so long. So it's kind of, if you're not going to be a starter and you can't help on special teams, it's kind of difficult when you get to 53. Yeah, see, we're getting back into the 53-man question, and we're going to do it this week, lead up to next week, before they have to – how much are special teams really going to decide it between how many linebackers are going to be able to keep, how many – the defense is much more intriguing as far as the 53-man roster. You got how many uh, wide receivers you're going to keep. That's the only question on offense as far as I'm concerned. Three backs done, no questions. Two quarterbacks done, no questions. Um, they got to keep a backup tight end. I don't think they're keeping two, which means Stoll's probably going to get it. Um, yeah. I'm not sure where else they're going to go. I think the offense is pretty much set and dry, but the defense is so up in the air. Yeah. And special teams is a huge part of it, John, because you got to be able to play specials like you're talking about. Like Sean Bradley, Sean Bradley did nothing for me again yesterday. Um, but he's maybe their best special teams player. I would say he's a borderline lock to make this team. But if you're t- keeping the two starters at linebacker and you're keeping Taylor and you're keeping Dean, uh, Sean Bradley, is he a lock to make this football team? I, I think so because of special teams. There you go. Um, um, now, you know, we, we talked about Tart playing 59 reps and Blankenship was at 44. So they were the third team safeties. Um and, and Tart kind of mixed in with the second team when Scott came out. Um, but but what's more important, 59 versus 44 or 15 versus three? That's how many special teams snaps Blankenship had versus Tart, 15 to three. And by the way, 15 was the high water mark on the team, on the entire team. So if it's between those two players, you're talking about youth, you're talking about special teams ability, you know, you're behind, you're behind not only Marcus Epps and Anthony Harris, Josiah Scott and Kayvon Wallace, but maybe even Andre Sachere, because he can also play safety and he's going to be around. So if you're keeping that many safeties, you damn well have to play special teams if you're going to be if you're going to be in that mix. That's why I don't like Chikwaski Tart's chances right now. All right, and let me add one more safety to the mix we haven't touched on at all today. And I give him credit because he got up to speed quickly enough to get in there. Uh, you go Amadi. 
I did get yeah, in. He's not play. playing safety, though. That's the thing. He's playing only nickel corner, but he is another special teams guy. To me, Amadi has set back the Mac McCain's, the Tay Gowans, and the Carrie Vincents of the world because not only Josh Job, but also Ugo Amadi, and part of it is special teams. He's supposed to be a good special teams player. Um, same thing. If you're going to be that deep on the roster, you you got to you got to freaking help on special teams. It's as simple as that. And I think the Eagles have gotten w- away from that sentiment of, of keeping. You can't keep a lot, but they use in you know they used to keep a player or two strictly for special teams. Most notably, Chris Maragos, yeah. uh, Brian Brayman. Uh, if people remember him, Najee Good was a great special teams player. They were really weren't great defensive players, and when you had to play Chris Maragos at safety, you'd st- you'd go, oof, oof. In fact, I got blocked uh, by who's the nicest guy in the world. I said, you know, you don't want to have Chris Maragos playing safety, um, and I was right, by the way. Um, but he was a great, great special teams player. I mean, great, one of the best in football. Uh, the entire league, um, I, the Eagles seem to have gotten away from that. And I don't know, like, who is their Chris Maragos? They don't have a Chris Maragos. No, no, no one on that level. I would say Bradley is probably there, uh, uh, but he actually could actually play on defense. So uh, depending on the question you're asking, there's not a guy that's just purely going to be on this team for special teams. I think you're going to need to be able to do both. Uh, other guy that did get a chance to show a little bit recent acquisition. He's swimming upstream. I don't think he's got any chance to make the roster, but tell me if I'm wrong. Uh, Tory played a couple of snaps yesterday. No. He, you don't think he's got a chance to make no. this team. Is no. he even a practice squad guy? Probably not because I, you know, I think Jason Huntley and, Kennedy Brooks are more likely to be on the practice squad than the roster. How many running backs you need on the practice squad, True. even though you have, you have 16, um, they needed bodies to get through training camp. And um, it was strange that they only brought uh, uh, so few running backs to begin with. So unfortunately, DeAndre is probably going to be, he might get cut by Tuesday. He might be one of those 85 to 80 guys. Yeah. Um you know, it's tough. Jared Williams tackle. He's probably going to be in that group. Um, yeah. All Long right. So shot. let me ask you about one more guy, 80 to 85, 85 down to 80. I'm going to go on the grassy knoll here, John. I think there may be a conspiracy in the league to keep Carson strong from being in the national football league. He threw one pass yesterday. It was a blatant pass interference. No flag to be. Why? Just because we finished fifty-seven of the sixty minutes, you want to get the hell yeah. home? Yes, Is that you want to get the hell you home. That flag in your uh, pocket, there, Mister Referee. It was blatantly pass that interference. That was that was blatant pass interference. Carson got screwed. He did get screwed, uh, and I'm saying it's a conspiracy to keep him out of the league. His first pass ever in an NFL game. I've, I've, I've heard those should have cons- been a penalty. I, I don't know. Were you the one who gave me that conspiracy, Jody, that the Eagles might be hiding Carson Strong to get him on the practice squad? No, no, no. no. Uh, somebody gave me that. No, 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 I, no I forget. <clears throat> I will say this. They're doing a hell of a job if they're trying to hide him. Um, yeah, he yeah. spent 57 minutes just standing there yesterday yeah. after reaching that. And, yes, nice touch on the pass to uh, Allen over the top. It was a pretty much perfectly thrown bomb uh and it was the highlight of the game let's be honest i know the 21 20 score doesn't the final doesn't matter whatever but that was the highlight of the entire game and it was a nice pass by reed sonette everything else was well below average again uh oh he's, yeah he's not a quarterback i don't think carson strong you're at practice i'm not you tell me he doesn't look good at practice. He's throwing too many wounded ducks. Where the hell did the strong arm report come yeah. from? Because it doesn't look like he has it. I get that, but I, I've seen more of Reed Smith. He's actually played in the preseason game. He can't play in the NFL. Well, no, I, I, I think he's going to be here. Um, 
you know, it's interesting that play people are already saying, well, you got to keep him on the 53. I think he can get after waivers and on the practice squad. Read to By that. Way, yeah. Nobody's um, claiming him. I know. I agree. That's, I think, I think people get too overhyped about one play in the one preseason. pass. They yeah. made one nice pass. And That's the same the thing with, one, and the yes, same thing yes. with Deb. And by the way, I'm looking at it as we speak. Uh, you know, I think most people can't catch up to that ball. You can't overthrow Devin Allen. Right. And he, and he's great. Uh, he did a great job tracking the football, but people are saying it on that end too. Well, now you got to keep Devin out. No, you don't. He played 12 snaps. He can run, he can run by people. I'm surprised it took him this long to do it, but you know, no, you, you don't have to worry about Devin Allen. You got to yes. worry about Devin Allen, what he w- wants to do with his life. If you want to keep him on the practice squad, maybe he wants to go back to the track world and concentrate on that. But nobody's picking up Devin Allen. Come on. Stop. I see I see our boy Martin Frank sitting in the green room, and we're going to get to him in a second. Hey, Martin, um, thanks for your patience. I got one more question for Johnny Mac before we go to break. I've said this before. I don't know if I said it here last year with you on Birds 365, but I know I've said it on shows I've done before. Something I keep an eye on every single year. The guys that teams cut that end up signing with other teams' practice squads as soon as the uh, cuts come down or shortly thereafter and then are on their practice squads and stay. I know it's the 54th best guy at best on your team, so it shouldn't be that big a deal. But you know what it tells me, John? Something about the organization overall and the coaching staff. Sometimes you find out that the team that cut them didn't want them and didn't even offer them a practice squad spot. But oftentimes a player who's just on that uh, borderline of making the team or not will choose another organization, will choose a better opportunity. You got to be able to sell. There's a little recruiting that goes on here that, yeah, we still like it. We're sorry we just got no space. You're going to get a chance here. You got to do a little recruiting. And I judge the coaching staff, specifically the head coach more than anybody else, uh, on their ability to do that. You think Eagles going to get burnt this year? Is this roster deep enough that they're going to cut somebody, not be able to keep them on the practice squad, going to go somewhere else and help someone else win games? I mean, more of the waiver wire than practice squad. I, I You know, there's everybody gets hung up on the waiver wire. It's like, 50 every year that gets claimed on waivers really over the first two, three days. So less than two players, a team. Um, you, you get the Noah Tungi eyes of the world. I remember how upset people, Oh, the Eagles wanted to keep Noah Tungi. Eye. They lost Noah Tungi. Eye, and he spent a year in Indianapolis, didn't play, came back. Now they're talking about him again. Is he going to make the 53? Or are they going to wave? I mean, no, nobody's going to hurt you. If you're if you're 54th on an NFL roster, and you get claimed on waivers, the Eagles are a talented team, so they're more apt to get somebody claimed on waivers uh, this year than other years. Um, but no, that type of guy's not going to hurt you. You Fair might enough. you might feel bad, and say, "Oh, I would have liked to keep him in the program," but you know, you'll live. You'll Fair live. Enough. Not going to change the overall fates and fortunes. Fair enough. All right. I see him ready. Martin Frank will join us next. Good to get Martin Frank up here with us on Birds 365.